Welcome to Circle the Circle. I'm your host, Pete Considori, alongside Andrew Allers and Stephen Pierce. We're going all around the NHL today, starting off with trades. Ben Bishop goes to the Kings in return. The Tampa Bay Lightning get Peter Budai. Andrew, yep. do you think Peter Budai is going to do anything for this Lightning team in the next season? Um, I don't think he's going to do much. I think that they're going to use Vasilevsky more than anything. He's been amazing for them. Last year in the playoffs, he stuck with them. Uh, they went all the way to seven games with the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins, and he's just been solid in the net, and I think that they're just going to continue to use him. This absolutely points out that uh, the template Lightning are telling Vasilevsky that this is your net now. Peter Dudai has done a serviceable job for the Kings. He went 27, 20, and 3 in 53 games. 2.21 goals against average, which is nothing to laugh at. Meanwhile, he's got a 9.917 uh, save percentage. A pretty good numbers for a guy who wasn't expected to be the guy for the Kings all season long. He held them in the race. They're at 66 points now, one point out from the wild card in the West. I think that he does a pretty good job for the Tampa Bay Lightning as a backup to now Andre Vasilevsky. Ben Bishop's going to be the backup uh, in the Kings uh, locker room to Jonathan Quick. Do you think that messes with them at all this next season? You know, I don't think so. I think Ben Bishop has brought, been brought there for a purpose. Jonathan Quick has, has played only two and a half games. He was injured in the first game for the Kings this season with a groin injury. Just came back two games ago. Ben Bishop now, you have two Vesna uh, candidates from last year. They were finalists. That's going to be great for the Kings because with a groin injury like uh, that Jonathan Quick had, he can be prone to that again. There was no surgery. He can also tear that. He's a very acrobatic goalie. He's been known to do the split. So Ben Bishop gives you great security with playoff experience that the Kings really want now, trying to make a push for the playoffs. Staying with the West, the Minnesota Wild uh, acquire Martin Hansel and Ryan White. They're really pushing for the Stanley Cup. Yeah, they really are. Um, I think that uh, one of the announcers said that, that they're a really good team and that they just need the missing uh, pieces, and now they have them. Um, they're doing a really good job with the coaching staff um, and all the players they've acquired over the years. So I think they just have to be able to find a way how to beat the Chicago Blackhawks, um, St. Louis Blues, and teams like that. And, you know, in a couple years, they might actually win the chip. It's definitely a rough road ahead. Uh, the Arizona Coyotes getting draft picks in the next three drafts upcoming. They're rebuilding right now, Steve. I know, and, and what kind of irks me about this, and I was listening to Shane Doan, the captain of the Arizona Coyotes, talk mid-game once Martin uh, Hansel had been traded, and he was pretty disgruntled, I would say. For a guy known for his composure, he was pretty upset about the fact that the Coyotes are basically throwing in the towel. The past three years with guys like Keith Yandel, uh, Bodker, and Vermette being traded from them at the deadlines, they're just stripping pieces now, and they're not getting warm bodies back. They didn't get any prospects, really. They didn't get anyone that could fill a role right now with their team and grow with them. They, got, they could have got guys like uh, Joel Erickson Eck, or Mike Riley, or even Jordan Greenway, who plays at Boston University right now, who's playing uh, alongside Clayton Keller, who is a prospect for the Arizona Coyotes, so you think that would have been a great piece. They could play together their four years at Boston University, then come to the Coyotes, at least they could have gotten something, and they really didn't get much in return for two big pieces now that the Minnesota Wild can take and possibly go to the Cup. Moving over to the East, Kevin Shattenkirk goes from the Blues to the Washington Capitals. We're thinking maybe a rental situation for the Caps, as in at the end of the season, they may not have the cap space to sign them on again for next season. The Capitals are in a very precarious situation, but I only say that because this is their message to the team. This is cup or bust. This is absolutely it for the Washington Capitals because they have a lot of uh, unrestricted free agents at the end of the season, including Kevin Shattenkirk, TJ Oshie, Justin Williams, Carl Alsner, Dana Winnick, Brett Connolly. Those are just the unrestricted guys. There's some more, and the restricted free agents include Evgeny Kuznetsov, Dmitry Orlov, Andre Burakovsky, and Philip Grubauer, which... That's a lot of players to resign with not a lot of cap space. And if they want to be able to go past the semifinal rounds in the Eastern Conference during the Alex Ovechkin era, this is the year to do it. And this is sending a the message to this team that Kevin Shattenkirk is the final piece of this puzzle. Andrew, where do you yep. think Kevin Shattenkirk is going next season if he doesn't resign with the Washington Capitals? Um, I think he might go to Vegas. Um, you know, he wanted to go to the Rangers, uh, his hometown. He's a hometown boy here. But it just didn't work out. He got offers from other teams, such as Tampa Bay. He didn't uh, accept those, but he accepted the Capitals. So I think that he might actually want to win a chip before he moves anywhere else because he, like you said, he's just there to fill in a position. They really need him. Ovechkin needs a championship. Uh, Shattenkirk needs a championship. So I think he's a great piece to the team. Very good point. He may go to Vegas. Moving on to the scores of last night, not much happening there. The Lightning being the Hurricanes. 
four to three in overtime, and the Blackhawks beating the Penguins in a huge win, four to one. That brings us over to the East for the standings there. Uh, the Capitals are 91 points in top place, 84 points for the Blue Jackets, 84 points for the Penguins. They're tied there. So it was a big win for the Penguins to get, which they didn't. Yeah, but I think if you're looking at the Penguins and what they've done uh, at the trade deadline, I know they have some injuries. Ali Mata and T Trevor Daly will be out for the season with their various injuries. But what they've done now is bring, brought in Mar Mark Strait and uh, Ron Hainsey, and I think that this is a great move for them. I know Chris Letang is out for a few games, but when he comes back, I think they have a, a great uh, defense now. They'll assure themselves to be in a good spot in the playoffs. Then you have Mata and Daly coming back for the playoffs, and I think that they're in a great, great-looking team right now, great-looking position. Over the Atlantic, you got the Canadians, the Sanders, and the Bruins all around that 70-point range. And, of course, the wild card, the New York Rangers, and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Moving over to the West in the standings, the Wild with 88 points, the Blackhawks with 85 points, the Predators is 73 points. Wild Blackhawks, big win for the Blackhawks that we saw against the Penguins. Andrew, do you think they creep up to the Wild? I think they do. I think that Chicago is still a great team. They're still one of the best teams. They still have Jonathan Taves, Patrick Kane. Um, they're going to get uh, Oduya back. So I think that they're just, you know, it's really hard to beat the, the Blackhawks. You know, a, a lot of teams, they've won like three championships in six years. They're a dynasty team. They keep finding ways to win. Um, and, you know, you just can't count them out, even though they're second place. They, I feel like they're still going to beat the Wild. Moving over to the Pacific, the Sharks, the Oilers, and the Ducks there, all around the 80 to high 70 points, as well as the Wild Card, the Flames, and the Blues. The Blues train away Kevin Shattenkirk. Do you think they still have a chance in this Wild Card? Yeah, absolutely, I do. I think that their defense will step up. They have plenty of pieces, including uh, Jay Bomeister, the captain, Alex Petrangelo, Carl Gunnarsson. I think guys like Petrangelo will fill in nicely on the power play, maybe where Kevin Shattenkirk left off. they got a lot of pieces up front that they can still use. They've had some shaky goaltending from Jake Allen. I think that he needs to assure the Blues that he can be the guy back there. And I know they've had, you know, Brian Elliott and Jake Allen go with a tandem situation. Now it's only on Jake Allen, so he really needs to, to solidify, which I think he's done in the past few weeks that he's the guy to go to. I don't think Nashville has played that consistent. They have some uh, problems on defense and, and goaltending. They're 5-0-1 in their past six games. However, they did let in 21 goals. So I think that their streaky play really leads me to believe that the Blues can take that third place spot anytime they want to. They just have to be able to make that push at the right time and get hot and stay hot. Consistent netminder is definitely the key for the Blues' success. Uh, they've always had problems with that, so hopefully they could do that now. Well, that's it for Circle of the Circle. I'm Pete Considori for Andrew Allers and Stephen Pierce. We'll see you next time.